Thank you very much indeed, Bill, for your ministry and song this evening. I want to turn just to one verse tonight. It's found in John's Gospel, chapter 14. And from John's Gospel, chapter 14 tonight, the Lord wants to speak to us on something. Something tonight that people are searching for, and they cannot find it. Something that people is desperately looking for. And I mean there's people desperately looking for it, but they cannot find it. Something that prosperity doesn't bring. Something tonight that position doesn't achieve. It's even something tonight that religion cannot give. That's right. Something tonight that even religion cannot give. You see, people tonight is searching for this one thing that prosperity cannot bring. No. Something tonight that power cannot achieve. No. Something tonight that religion cannot give. No. Something tonight that money cannot buy. Do you know what people's really searching for tonight? What people really long for tonight, do you know what it is? I thought Bill was going to preach my sermon this evening. What so many people tonight are looking for tonight is peace. Real, lasting, genuine peace. If I had a pound in my pocket for every man or woman that said to me, I would give you my right arm just for a night's peace. Because so many people have been prosperous in the world, but they lived a life without peace. Robin Williams said, I've everything but peace. Position doesn't bring you peace because Winston Churchill, when he was speaking to Billy Graham in 1954, no less than nine times, Winston Churchill told Billy Graham, I'm a man without hope, I'm a man without peace. Religion can't bring you peace, dear. There's many people I know when they fill themselves full of catechisms and creeds and they get exploded with religion, but deep within the heart, deep within the soul, deep within the mind, there's no peace. And peace is something that money cannot buy. God wants to speak to all of us tonight about peace, peace that can be yours. Peace that can be yours tonight. Listen, dear, I know that you've been searching for this for a long time, and maybe you too, sir. And there's a longing in your heart for real peace. Do you know where you find it? Let's listen to the words of the Lord Jesus in John 14, verse 27. Listen to what he says. He says, Peace I leave with you. Listen to this next line. My peace. Get that. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Do you know something tonight? That is peace that money cannot buy. That's peace tonight religion cannot give. That's peace this evening that prosperity cannot bring. This is real peace tonight. Man searches for peace. Man longs for an inner peace. But it can't be found. Yes, they're looking for the right thing, but they're looking in the wrong places. Tonight, if you're longing for peace this evening, your search tonight stops because here it is. The Lord Jesus says, My peace I give unto you. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, He's the source of all peace. Let me just, for the closing and remainder of this meeting this evening, tell you tonight that this peace that you can have this evening, that it's real peace. 
Because you see, the Lord Jesus has my peace. This is no ordinary peace that you can have tonight. This is eternal peace. It's real peace tonight because this peace comes from the Lord Jesus. You may say to me, well, George, what is real peace? Do you know what real peace is? Real peace is something that says, all is well even though my world is turned upside down. Real peace is something that tells us all is well when our world falls apart. Now that's real peace. It's real peace because the Lord Jesus tonight is the source of that peace. Listen, friends, this peace isn't found in any religion. This peace tonight is not found in any church. This peace is found in a person tonight, and the person is the Lord Jesus. You see, He's the source of real peace. My peace. wonder tonight, are you searching for real peace? Are you searching for something tonight you cannot find? That's your peace. Do you know what real peace really is? Real peace is not being absent from fear. Real peace is not being absent from worries. Real peace is not being absent from problems. Real peace is peace that lies within. Peace within the heart. And the Lord Jesus says to you this evening, stop for a moment. Let me tell you this. My peace I can give to you tonight. My peace will bring peace to your heart. My peace will bring peace to your soul. My peace will bring peace to your mind. Listen, dear, so you long for peace of mind. Thank God there's real peace for the mind tonight. And it's real peace. You know, friend, tonight, this peace, as the Lord Jesus Christ clearly says, it's not a peace that the world gives. You see, the old peace the world gives, it's not peace at all. It's only old bluff. The peace that the world builds upon, the peace that the world gives is a conditional peace. It's not real peace. And the Lord Jesus says, my peace is real. You see, the world's peace tonight is something that you hope for. It's something that you maybe dream of. It's something that you long for. But it's not peace at all. I know tonight unsaved people tonight enjoy peace. It's only when they are absent from fear. I got a telephone call many years ago from Sandringham Nursing Home on the, on the Guilford Road outside Portadown. It was 12 o'clock at night. Because in there, there was a wee man dying. A Christian man he was. His name was Reggie Dawson. Reggie took Alzheimer's and he was brought into the home and there's many a night I would have went into Reggie and prayed with him, and because of the old disease, Reggie was rattling off a whole pile of things that he didn't mean to. But do you see when I began to read the Scriptures to Reggie, and, and when I began to pray with him, tears used to flood his cheeks. Do you want to know why? Because there was real peace within his heart. But this night I got a phone call, George, can you come? Reggie's dying. 
and into the wee bedroom. And in that bedroom, I got on my knees, you know. I got on my knees at the side of the bed. Reggie couldn't communicate. But I read to him, and I prayed with him, and believe it or not, I sang to him. And I sang this wee hymn, My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. But there was something about that wee bedroom, you know. And mind you, I have been in the bedroom, and I have been at the bedside of many a dying saint. And I'll tell you, friends, every one of them was flooded with peace, you know. There was peace there. And that was a peace that the world doesn't give. No, that's a peace that the Lord Jesus gives because it's real peace. And the Lord Jesus says tonight, you can have my peace because my peace was purchased for you on the cross. Because my dear unsaved friend tonight, your peace begins at the cross when you come to the Lord Jesus as a sinner because the Bible says in Colossians 1 and 20, having made peace through the blood of His cross. You see, His peace tonight is not a process worked up by men. His peace is real that was purchased by the blood of Christ. Real peace. And this real peace can be yours tonight. Why? Because this real peace can be received peace. Because listen to the Lord Jesus, my peace which I give unto you. You know, this is what the Lord Jesus wants to give you tonight. He doesn't want to give you an old half-dead religion. He wants to give you peace of heart tonight. He wants to give you peace of mind tonight. He wants to give you His peace, my peace I give unto you. Do you know tonight in the north of Ireland there are hopeless cases? Let's say medically speaking they're beyond hope. They're beyond help. I've told this story often here, but maybe there's someone here tonight who needs to hear the story who has never heard it before. I got another phone call one night, late at night it was, and I was called to go to a home in Lane Grove in Lurgan. I got this phone call from a lady asking me, could I go quick because this woman's talking about taking her life. You see, when you can't find real peace, that's what can happen. Why is suicide rampant today? Because they cannot find real peace. And this wee woman, I went to Lane Grove, and the two ladies who called me brought me in. And there this wee woman was sitting all curled up in a chair with 20 embassy regal in her hand. And I went over to her, and I sat in the arm of the chair, and he says, what's wrong with you, dear? She says, I don't want to live any longer. Oh, says, I wear that with you. She says, why do you not want to live any longer? She says, because nobody loves me. He says, well, now, now that's not true. He says, uh, I can't remember the two ladies' names now. I say, well, Mary, was, she was the wee lady. He says, uh, this lady's here and this other lady's here. She they both care for you, and sure, I'm here, and I got out of bed to come and see you because I care. Ach, I know, but, and I says, Ach, I know, but God loves you. You know what you said to me? God could never love me. Oh, I says, God can love you, all right. And I got my wee Bible out, and I turned it to John 3, 16, and I says, there you are, for God so loved the world. Do you know, friends, that evening in that wee house in Lane Grove, a wee pensioner's bungalow it was, when I explained to her the way of God's salvation and God's love, she was on her knees. She was drunk at the stage. She was on her knees. 
Show me how I can find him. I got on my knees beside her and I led her to the Lord. I used to hear men talk like this, but I witnessed this at first hand. She got on her knees drunk that night, but I'll tell you this, she got off her knees stone sober. The smell of drink was there, but I'll tell you the change was there. I sat on with her and got a wee cup of tea made for her and we talked and we got on. And I left the house, it's about two o'clock in the morning now, and, and off I went and I says, I'll go and see you the next Tuesday night. And I went and seen her and the transformation in that wee woman was powerful. She says, ever since the night you come, I have known real peace. Well, she says, I dear, it wasn't because I come. It's because you've asked the Lord Jesus into your heart and your sins have been forgiven. Do you know why people is no peace today? Because they haven't their sins forgiven. Sin tonight is man's greatest problem. Sin tonight is your greatest problem because sin is the cancer of the soul. Sin not only takes the body, sin takes the soul. But the Lord Jesus, because of his death at Calvary, sin is dealt with tonight. And by receiving the Lord Jesus into our hearts and by repenting of our sin, thank God our sins go. His peace comes. One month after I led that wee, lo wee woman to the Lord, she died suddenly. And tonight she's with the Lord. And she could die peacefully because she received the peace that the Lord Jesus gave her. My peace I give unto you. Will you have this real peace tonight that perhaps someone here has been searching for for so long? I'll tell you, friend, where you find it. You find it tonight in the Lord Jesus. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. But here's the problem tonight. Even though it's real, and it's very real, even though tonight this peace can be received, too often this peace can be rejected. That day the Lord Jesus, when he died on Calvary's cross, the Bible tells us in Luke 23, two thieves were crucified with him. One on the right hand, the other on the left. But the man dying on one side of the Lord Jesus, do you know what he did? He did what I did, and he did what a lot of people in this church service done. He repented of his sin and was sorry and asked the Lord Jesus to forgive him, and so he did. But then there was the other boy, he had the same opportunity because he was in the same distance. He was the same distance from the Lord. He had the same view of him. He was the same distance from the Lord as the other fellow, but he refused and he rejected. You see, one of them thieves died in peace. The other died without peace. You see, one thing about this real peace that the Lord Jesus gives it's not, it's not only a peace that we can enjoy when we're living, it's a peace that we can experience when we're dying. Real peace, that is. That's there for us, not just through our living, but for us all through our dying. Can you say tonight, all is well with my soul? This is... This is the real McCoy tonight we're talking about. This is real peace that you can have. Will you accept it? Will you receive it? The Lord Jesus wants you to know tonight, my peace I will give unto you. All you've got to do is repent of your sins this evening and invite the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. And he'll give you a peace with a capital P, a hope with a capital H, and a life that is eternal. My peace that can be yours. Let's pray. 
we just turn to Thee now, Lord Jesus, and we thank You tonight for Your love, for the peace that You offer, for the grace that You give. And tonight, Lord, we pray earnestly for those who are without peace, Lord, tonight, and tonight they've been searching for it for so long. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, through Thy Word, Thine own words, will help them to receive that real peace tonight. We pray in thy name. Amen. Now we're not going to have a closing.